squeamish moments of intrigue with Maya Dumpy. I'm Maya Dunphy, and like most women, I'm not ecstatic about the physical changes that come with getting older. But just how far am I willing to go to keep the ravages of time at bay? As more and more Irish women my age and younger attempt to flash freeze their faces into wrinkle-free perma youth. Well, my main areas will be here, here, it's at the crow's feet. Will I be able to resist the pressure to follow suit? It's very strange how people are so obsessed about people's age here. Or can I find a way to age naturally and gracefully? In a youth-obsessed culture where my aging face is increasingly seen as a chemically treatable disease. A few weeks ago, I turned 38. At 28, that would have seemed impossibly ancient. But now that I'm here, it's surprisingly OK. OK, so I have a few grey hairs, laughter lines, and it takes longer for the pillow creases to fall out of my face in the morning. A hint of concealer, slick of mascara, and most days I look fine. But in women's magazines and ads on the telly, the message is clear. I'm not fine. I'm hurtling towards 40 and sprinting past my prime. And I need to do something radical to stop the rot. Before it's too late. At 38, I'm a member of the biggest girl gang in Ireland. Almost 48% of Irish women are now aged 25 to 54, the group most aggressively targeted by the anti-aging industry, selling us our youth back in Botox and blood. The PRP vampire facial, so gorily touted by 32-year-old Kim Kardashian, has recently become available in Ireland. I went to meet artist Dee Murphy, daughter of broadcaster Mike Murphy. Today Dee had an appointment to have her gorgeous face vampirically lifted, and I wanted to know why. <laughs> but you don't mind saying you're the same age as me, a year older, you're 39, yeah. aren't you? And you feel it's, this is not a fear of getting older, or a fear of ageing, or a fear of what the date of birth in your passport, this is, or is it a little bit of that? To be honest with you, from living in America, people never ever ask your age there. Uh, so, and I'm very, very taken aback at how people do ask your age here. It's, it's, I find it a bit, it's very strange how people are so obsessed about people's age here, which they really, really are. I do think that a lot of women are pressurized into it here. Definitely, for sure. And I think now with the reality TV shows, all the, the magazines that are out there, all the, with the young ones, as we, as we call them, um, that's, yes, there is a bit of a, you know, yeah. You had Botox at 30. I, I, I've, I've never lied young. about it, no. And what would you like to get from this? Maybe the Botox is, is starting to wear off. I had it done six months ago. And I feel like I need a little bit of something, just a bit of a kick. So are you ready for this? I am so ready Brace for it. Brace yourself, okay, let's go. Let's go. And now it's the R shot. <laughs> the R shot, great. And now here's me with my powder stuck in my bum, but whatever. <laughs> well, I've got the mic back as well. <laughs> When asked, have you had any radical beauty procedures, 79% of Irish women said no, 21% said yes. So far, I've dodged the hypodermic, but for how long? What would you do to my face, then? I mean, your eyebrows are flat, and you can see these go up and come down. You should actually mm -hmm. drop here a little bit more. So your eyebrows probably need to go up to about there. And that can be done quite easily. But they were always... See, were yours mm -hmm. always like that, or is that because you've had Botox? Um, well, no, I haven't had Botox for six months, so... So I'm just but... wrecked, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But my... Ah, oh, no, not that one. No, I always had quite high eyebrows. And what do you think, Dr Tracy, of, you know, women in their 40s and older who end up feeling a little bit invisible to the world? Now, the interesting thing is that most people want to look around 34 to 38. That is the ultimate 34 age. to 38. That's what we've worked out. Wow. So even girls at 21 try and work up, and people of an older age tend to work back. And we've worked it out that late That's 30s. Because right, you know? some of those younger Hollywood actresses, Lindsay Lohan, they actually mm -hmm. do look older than well, yeah, 25, yeah, 26, yeah, yeah. don't they? They yeah. all have this kind of yeah. same. Yeah. The, the call now, zero age, is late 30s, uh, yes. uh, medically. All right. <laughs> like to stay forever at zero age, Dee was, in laywoman's terms, having blood removed from her arm and pumped back into her own face. So this is the start of it, Dr. Tracy, where you're taking Dee's own blood out. Could you use someone else's blood for this? No. What if you use, like, a 12-year-old's blood? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably legal, but... 
<laughs> the idea behind the treatment is to separate the platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, in Dee's blood and re-inject it back into the skin on her face to stimulate collagen production. Well, that sounds reassuringly sciency. So... Oh, my goodness! We look at that very closely. What we're going for is actually this little layer in the center. What we have above it is plasma. What we have below it is the red cells. So we have to get that little curvy bit. And at the same time, <clears throat> as I go to retrieve it, I have to put in this activator to release the growth factors from the cells. It's like that really posh glue. Do you remember Araldite glue? You need to mix the two bits. <laughs> and then you only had five minutes <laughs> later. <laughs> and the way we're getting it now, a little blood tinged tends to be the way that... So do you think that all women my age, this is the time we should be having this stuff done, and otherwise it's all downhill from here? Personally, I think people should probably start getting things done from about 21 onwards. What? Did he just say 21? I think people should probably start getting things done from about 21 onwards. Oh my God, he did say 21. What? Be your baby at 21. I know that, but it's just little tweaks. So is it too late for me? <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> <laughs> to hang on to her makeup for a later engagement, Dee had chosen to have the treatment without the usual application of anaesthetic cream. Deep breath. I was starting to wonder if that was wise. This looked excruciating. Oh my goodness. She brave, isn't she? I'm a very brave girl. She is very brave. So the effect is going to be at the injection, the site of the injection is going to be uh, to plump up. Well, well actually, do, Maya, what you do is over the next period, collagen is going to grow in all these areas. So certainly a long way from Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Do you open your eyes for a second? Sorry mm -hmm. for that. Might be an opportune time even, Maya, for you to chat me. The, I know, I'm just feeling a bit queasy. Oh, that's it, is it? Okay. It's particularly around the eye area. I'm starting, and I'm actually not squeamish at all. I'm fairly good around eyes, so don't worry. But would you consider this to be non-invasive? Yes. See, that's what amazes me because Women now talk about, oh, and I have a facial, I have a facial, but suddenly the facials are becoming more and more complicated, like lasers and this yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But they're still classified as non-invasive. I, I would consider probably, it, it's sitting on the borderline because we're breaching the epidermis around the skin, yeah. so it's invasive to an extent. But to me, invasive medicine normally is something that requires either intubation, an anaesthetist, or an overnight stay. But with these kind of treatments, I mean, you, there's nothing you can do at 39. It's a one-off treatment, and then that's it. You're going to be grand. Everything has to be topped up, doesn't it? 39 is an interesting sort of age because you're just on the cusp of hitting 40. But somebody like Dee, they would have been sort of looking after themselves quite well. You're pretty good, actually. You're a bit red, but, you know. No, you're just a bit red. Jesus, a bit red. Look at all that. Oh, that's bruising. No. But just to be aware, I did all that I in here. Yeah, I thought that, yeah. I didn't hear. How are you feeling, Dee? Um, to be honest, not that bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay. Well, listen, we're going to go. Yeah, and, uh, sounds good. We'll talk again in 28 days. OK, thanks a million. It'll be a ride. Thank well, you. It's a bigger <laughs> ride than you are already. <laughs> I hope. We do what we must because we can. Dee is a very, very brave girl. Um, I'm not squeamish, but I didn't think that would be quite so invasive for a non-invasive procedure. And that's the thing that surprised me most, that you hear about these non-invasive, non-surgical facelifts. But that, I mean, that needle went in almost half an inch. It was kind of bloodier than I thought it would be, but, and she had no anaesthetic. So yeah, it seemed quite severe to me, but we'll uh, see in 28 days how she looks. Between 2009 and 2013, it's estimated that the Irish plastic surgery industry lost 30% of its market, making the industry worth 35 million euro. That's still 10 million euro more than it was worth at the height of the boom in 2006. Sad fact is, in the 2020s, it's more acceptable for a woman to be declared bankrupt than to look middle-aged but I felt I still had a few good years left before I needed to seriously worry about it. 
and that I met cosmetic surgeon Mr. Cambit Skulchin. And Mr. Skulchin, what do you think about aging gracefully? Do you think any woman should just say no to all of it and age gracefully? There's nothing wrong with you know making yourself um, you know uh, better and keep keeping you know maintaining your yourself essentially. But do you think? You know, as a man, that women are worrying too much about getting older, too young. Do you think that, that we're too concerned about it? Sometimes, you know, I have patients that come to me and what they're asking for is completely unrealistic. Um, I, I can recall a celebrity that, that came to me recently at the age of 28 asking for a facelift. <gasps> so really? that is completely ludicrous. So, you know, there are other issues there that are not physical. Can you pinpoint any big issues with my face? But what I'd like to do is to do a closer examination on you, okay. and then I'll talk to you about that. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here it was, every woman's nightmare, the dreaded skin analysis machine. Every pore, a depressing statistic. Every wrinkle, calculated as a percentage of my eventual decrepitude. So you can see Look at the here. state of me! <laughs> So you can see here, the main thing that I would want to actually go into first to have a look at you is the actual UV damage. So if we have a look at the actual percentage rate on a UV, out of 100 women of your age, you're 32% better than them, which is fairly low, okay? And when we go to the actual... It's fairly low. It's fairly low. And you'll see here in the relative bar that it'll be actually in the red area. But okay. I use SPF every day. SPF every day, depending on are you using it in your makeup, are you use it, using it externally as well? Are you I use using it under it? my makeup. Okay, so it has to be actually over the makeup as well. Wow, that's fascinating. So you really do need to be educated <laughs> on it. <laughs> so what I would do... You've is... undermined everything <laughs> I thought I was good at. I'm going to print this report. Okay. I'm going to get you to sit in the consultation chair and I'm going to go in and get the surgeon for you then. Is that okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for nothing. Back with Mr. Galchin, it was time to make a plan to save my 68% more sun damage than women my age face. There are two things that I can see. Okay. Okay. The, the first one that I'm going to mention to you is just here under your eyelid. And most women know that once they hit a certain age, eye, the eye area is one of the first areas that they notice in terms of aging because the eyelids get a little bit droopier, they begin to show eye bags and so on, and that's because the eyelid skin is it's thinner than the rest of the face. But one of the things that I've noticed in you is that in your mid face, which is the area just under your eye, lower eyelids, mm -hmm. it's got a little bit flat. So you've lost a little bit of, of volume there. Oh my goodness, okay. have I? Mm, nothing to be worried about. That's just, not... that's just getting older, is it? It's just one of the early signs of aging. What would you do if I wanted to correct that? Well, if you wanted to correct that, there are a couple of different options. You could, for example, consider fillers, uh, dermal fillers, uh, and I would suggest that that would need to be done very carefully. And what if I didn't want to have fillers? Is there anything I can do to try and slow this down? Me and well, my flat face. As well as the fillers, you could you could try a more natural option, which is basically using fat. So, for example, we can use your own fat and transfer some fat from another part of your body into your face. Isn't it funny? You spend your life wanting a slimmer face. You know, when you're younger and you have that little gerbil cheek looked look, and then you just want to get rid of it, and then suddenly you want it back again. It's it's one of the ironies in life. It's like half the world are starving, and the other half are starving themselves. So. That's, yeah. That is just That's ironies. That's a way to look at it. So where would you take the fat from? So for example, we can take it from the tummy or from the hips. Nice. That's win-win. Win-win. Mm, slimmer thighs and... Well, no, I think for now, I think I will just go away and take a lesson on the SPF from you. I think the SPF is really all mm. you need in terms of prevention. That was just to destroy the last bit of confidence I had, Mr. Gunn. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you, I asked you to be honest, and you were. Yes. So thank you very but, uh, much. Everything else is good. So, so now I'm on camera with no makeup on and I've got a flat face. <sighs> I am absolutely overwhelmed by that. That was, uh, I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought that, um, worst case scenario, I might have a few little wrinkles or, I know I have some pigmentation. As you can see, my makeupless face. 
But the fact that I have me using SPF properly and my cheeks are starting to collapse is <laughs> quite depressing. But uh, I'm going to soldier on with my SPF and um, hopefully resist the uh, temptation for fillers. <sighs> Look at that face. Feeling deeply uncomfortable about sacrificing my natural face to needles and fillers, I went to meet Dr. Kate Coleman, who pioneered the use of Botox in Ireland back in the 1980s. Now aged 52, Dr. Kate's been having Botox since her 30s, and I was dying to see if it had worked. It's all about stopping the clock. I mean, if you stayed looking like this, and you can, you know, for the next 10, 20 years, you, you will feel amazing. So how would I stay looking like this till my 50th birthday? People like you, you know, it, it's a myth that you're naturally going to lose your beauty as you age. If you make sure you're not exposed to environmental toxins, eating sugar is an incredibly aging thing. Um, really? Having, oh, sugar, so sugar, like sugar is evil. So looking at you, you tend to frown a little bit. Definitely, you would benefit from a tiny little bit of Botox if you were interested. You look gorgeous, but if you were, I would be suggesting that little bit. You've got a beautiful, symmetrical mouth, lovely lips. Um, you want to keep that shape. You don't want it looking any different. That's where people have to be very careful with fillers. Do you mind if I just have a little... I just want to do something. I just want to have a quick peep at something here. So what's great about you is if I gently press on your brow here, the brows don't move, OK? So it means you're not going to get a drop in your brow. The problem with you, I should show you this in a mirror, but if I press here, now you lift your eyebrows, I've now shown that if you had this treatment, you're actually going to look really weird on this side. Lift them again, there you go. Because I'm simulating the action. Oh. So you would need a tiny, tiny bit out here. I'd look like Jack time. Nicholson. <laughs> My husband would love that. Because I've heard the younger you start using Botox, the more effective it will be. The problem is that if a younger person is doing a lot of Botox, they are wasting their muscle, they get atrophy and they lose facial tone. If they have it and it weakens the muscle, Long term, they actually will end up with slightly less plump features, which in their 30s won't look as youthful. And can I ask, have you had Botox? Of course I have. <laughs> Has it been around long, long enough for us to know that it's definitely safe? A man called Scott started using it in 1982. Uh, in America just looking at the eye muscles and then in Ireland the Botox clinic here opened up in 1984 in the eye and deer for people with spasm and with squints we used to get it free from the chemical warfare laboratory in Portland. The chemical Down. warfare laboratory? Exactly. <laughs> And uh, that's where we got the original Botox from. Come over in trucks with skull and crossbones. Precisely. But well, it's a deadly poison. They would send it into us free. That's how toxic and deadly it is. But the dose used is completely mi microscopic. For example, Allergan in Westport in Ireland, who make Botox for the whole of the world, they would actually make most of it from just a tiny vial. So it's diluted that much. So it's, what's used is incredibly safe. Worldwide sales of Irish-made Botox is set to hit 1.3 billion euro in 2013. By 2018, sales are projected to reach a staggering 2 billion euro. But if my face was to stay tight and wrinkle-free forever, could I really expect to have a happier life? Social researcher Danica Shurek conducted the only study of Irish women's emotional experiences of cosmetic treatments. I wanted to hear what she had discovered. Um, and I think the issue that kind of kept coming up was the idea of women trying to look what they viewed as normal. And a lot of times when they talked about normality, it was what they saw in the media. And so that would be a certain size breast, a certain proportion of waist to hip, a certain way your face appears, youthful. But were these women happier? They were actually quite happy, and actually one person um, said it was uh, the best decision of her life. Were you secretly, was there, were a part of you secretly hoping to find out these women weren't any happier? Personally, maybe there was a part of me that thought, oh, it would be nice to report that women's lives didn't really improve as a result, and people were disappointed. But that being said, that's, that was not the case for my sample, and I'm happy that they were happy. Did you at any point during this research go into a clinic yourself or have anything done? I did actually. Did um, you? Yeah, yeah, as part of it, I interviewed a clinic manager and she generously offered to let me try one of her treatments. It was a non surgical procedure. And did you find it positive or? Uh, to be honest, I found it problematic and, and troublesome. She took out a pen and she started drawing on my body. And it was areas of, you know, typical troublesome areas, the stomach, thighs, this hips, bit here. that bit mm -hmm. there, that bit there. We know the parts. And she started drawing on them in pen. 
and then she, you know we did the treatment and um, it was fine it was it was painless to be honest but afterwards I realized the power that that can have on somebody and somebody who my self-esteem was never particularly low but I came out of there knowing that there are people that think I should be better that there are things I could do to be better when I first started questioning why women are made to feel so bad about looking older I was feeling pretty good about myself now I'm not so sure I've had a cosmetic surgeon suggest Botox to fix my collapsing brows. Who knew the rot could start in an eyebrow? I've met a gorgeous woman the same age as me having painfully radical procedures in a quest for a kind of eternal super youth. But I had faith in my own rigorous skincare regime. I still believed in the transformative power of the creams. But I was about to discover that maybe everything I believed in was wrong. So I should put these creams into a syringe and inject them into my face. That is the only way <laughs> that you can do it. I'm Maya Dunphy. I recently turned 38. And although I'm still not noticing any massive facial changes, over the past year or so, I've been reluctantly tuning into the message that my face is a time bomb set to explode into unacceptable, unless I detonate it with cosmetic intervention. When former Miss Ireland Olivia Tracy let her hair go grey, like lots of women, I admired her crusading determination to look magnificently her age. But dying away the greys is the one anti-aging treatment that gives me visible results. And holding on to a lustrous head of hair is the one sure thing I know that women my age really, really do want. You know, there was always a pressure, I don't know if pressure is the right word, but an expectation that when women hit a certain age, they would suddenly go short with their hair. It was basically when you got married. You, you were allowed to get married with long hair. But then almost mysteriously, you came back from your honeymoon and you were shorn. And it wasn't just like a kind of an attractive sort of, you know, Kate Moss pixie cut. To me, it suggested an end of sexuality. It was like, you're now married, you need to you know, get out of the high heels, put the flat shoes on, put on the shapeless dress with the zip up the front, and crucially, cut your hair, because you're, you, you know, it's Samson and Delilah, your, your strength, your attraction is in your long hair. You're now married, you're off the market, stop all that, game over. And I just thought, kind of, when I was coming up to that age, I thought, like, do I have to do this now? Because my mother did it, and her mother did it, and, you know, a lot of women of my generation were starting to do it. I mean, I am now, the wrong side, I'm completely the wrong side of 45. And I know of women who are approaching 50 or who are around 50 who are going, actually, do you know what? I actually just look bonkers now because of long hair. You know, people will think I'm a kind of a, you know, a woman with lots of cats, you know, that kind of slightly, you know, yeah, it's cat like- Cat lady and cat woman, only they sound the same, but <laughs> huge difference. I know, one word, huge difference. Do you think you will ever Go shorter. Is the time coming when you think you might? Well, I suppose you go for that you know, tidy look. The oh god, no, it's don't, so don't depressing, ever, don't isn't ever. it? I don't. I mean, you know, I, I suppose you know, as you age, obviously the, the the quality of your hair, you know, diminishes. So I mean, at the moment, I seem to be getting away with it. You know, my hair is actually in pretty good nick. I presume at some point there will come a day where the hairdresser will kind of go, oh, that's just broken off in my hand. I'll just throw that on the floor and hope she doesn't notice. So it might come to it, but I mean, it'll, it'll, be, a, it'll be a very dark day. I might try and become one of these sophisticated boho type women who just wears it in a bun all the time. I think we should start a trend. It also <laughs> gives you a little bit of a, a tightening effect as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, well, it's... What it's, they call yeah. the Croydon facelift. Yeah, the Dublin 24 Botox. Yeah, I'm all in favour of that. With the, with the very tight elastic. That means that you kind of end up talking like that the whole time and people think you're gone mad, but you look sophisticated. Well, I can't wait to see you rocking the little bone film. <laughs> Next day, I went to an entirely different kind of hair salon to find out if life had been any easier for the generation of women born too early for balayage and Botox. I was about to experience the world of the blue rinse and set. What is, what's a blue rinse, Michael, that we hear about so much? What is a blue rinse? Well, the blue rinse is the blue rinse look, Mona, that's it. That's the okay, silver lining, yeah. the, the true steel. Yeah. It would be completely grey, but when you put the blue rinse on, when it dries, it looks more it's steely. just a watercolour. Yeah. It's like steel, yeah, and that's it. Okay. You're beautiful. Very fashionable. <laughs> you can see some of my own little greys. I'm going to put some little grey. Oh, that's in. tight. Yeah. So this is what these ladies go through every week. This is go through every week. Men love curly hair. They love 
Men don't tend to notice these things. No, some men don't. I was interested to hear if these women had ever felt any pressure to stay looking young. But when you first started to go grey, did you even think about dyeing your hair, or was that never, even an issue? Never. Just didn't bother you? No. What about you, Alice? Did you? Bad me at all? No. 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 Well, what age were you? Do you remember when you started? I was started over forty. Things? Yeah. When I started getting grey. And did it ever? Do you remember thinking, "Oh no, I'm getting older," or just? No. You're too no. busy. Just forgot about it and just. I think grey yeah, hair is lovely. lovely. I'd love to go snow white. I, I never dyed it. And Mona, no. you didn't either. No. None of you did. No, I just said these cold things. What do you call them? A rinse. A rinse. A rinse. rinse, yeah. Well, I know a person, and the thing was, she dyed her hair that much, that real cold black, jet, jet, jet black, black yeah. you know? Yeah. And she lost every bit of her yeah. hair. Yeah. It all yeah. fell down. Yeah. That's fell out. very harsh and she as well. ended up with a wig. Really start dyeing it. The roots of your hair then, you have to get it done there. That's every I've week or yeah. fortnight. Yeah. But what do you think now of, say, my generation? We're under so much pressure to kind of keep looking a certain way. And do you think that's just nonsense? A load of crap. Yeah. <laughs> a load of crap, Mum. Yeah, yeah but look at you. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way I look at it. And Betty, what about you? Did you ever dye your hair? Never could afford it. You had to keep it up. Yeah. No. But I guess if no, if nobody was dyeing their hair, it wasn't an issue. Know. A, as you said, you didn't have the money to be going to hairdressers and spending however much every six weeks to dye your hair. And B, that other women weren't doing it either, so nobody was judging you for having a few grey hairs because there was more to worry about in life. What about the other signs of ageing that we all have to go through, the few lines and all? Does that bother you either, or is it just... No. It's part of life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look in the mirror. <laughs> Thing is, I'd probably spend too much time at the mirror, poring over wrinkles I'm told I shouldn't have. It was time to let it all go, relax under a brain sucker hairdryer and drift back to a time when dying to stay young was, well, just a load of crap. Here we go. That should be OK now, switch off. Very warm underneath that, isn't oh, it? Oh, Michael. No, you survived that very well. Fair play to you. I... Now let's hope this look this is, is quite fun. This is quite traumatic. Yeah, it's good fun. Of all the things I've done in the name you of beauty. You have been very good. Well, beauty has... Well, ironically, this is a look that I haven't you chosen to You won't be having it done for. every weekend. Anyway, look, so. I'm bright red now from that heat. I'd agreed to allow Michael to temporarily grey me up like a woman accepting her fate, circa 1968. Oh. Ah, come well, on. No, that's fantastic. Oh, that one's really caught. Well, there was me thinking this was last lower one. maintenance. That's the last one. Mm. Yeah. That is exactly what I wanted. And as the head cools down, as the even cools down, the corner will drop and it'll become nice and wavy, you know, a nice old-fashioned look, and that's just the way it'll be. And Are you going to give me some grey now as well? I'm going to put some grey in for you now as well. One thing is, I do have some grey. I just dye it all away. It's all going a bit Cruella de Vil now. Oh, my goodness. That's quite freaky. So this is me this... with my grey hair coming through. Grey hair coming through. My set in place. Very I feel attractive. like I'm Very playing attractive. an evil stepmother or something. You're a good-looking girl. Thank you, And Michael. all you need now is <laughs> to go out and enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. And have a good evening. It had felt liberating to go back in time to a place where looking older wasn't treated as a syndrome. But times definitely moved on, and today I was meeting Dublin beauty therapist Patricia Malloy, who's the same age as Madonna, and about to do what Madge does and have a decade lobbed off in the time it takes to eat a burrito with a lunchtime thread contour facelift. The first thing you do, this is very nip-tuck. You mark the face, do you? Oh, so it's I just like face job. painting, Patricia. That's all it is now. <laughs> You'll get a tiger on your face or something. <laughs> Lovely. And what were your areas of worry? It's your jaw, is it? Yeah, my jawline, just things have started to go a little bit south. Um, and I just want to get that lift, just a nice natural lift back up again. I'm quite a good sewer. Would you give me a chance, Patricia? <laughs> <laughs> I think we I can need do it to the experts. I can do a back stitch. <laughs> I was unsure as to actually what was going to happen here. So what is the youngest woman you have treated with this procedure? Personally. I think personally, uh, sure.